Fabricio and Christiane maintain an apparently normal relationship. The couple live together with Christiane's two daughters, 9-year-old Caroline and a 16-year-old teenager whose name was not revealed, both result of Christiane's previous relationship. They had been married for about five years and lived in Pompeia, a Brazilian city with just over 20,000 inhabitants. Fabricio has a degree in psychology from the University of Marilia, specializing in the use of games to develop logical mathematical reasoning in elementary school students. According to one of her sisters, Kezia, Christiane was a person who was always looking after happiness, and it was for this reason that she entered a new marriage, soon after the end of her old relationship, that ended after Christiane discovered that she had been betrayed by her partner. Also according to her sister, in addition to the betrayal, Christiane also lost her mother at the same time, which left her vulnerable and distressed. Fabricio then appeared as an encouragement and a new perspective of fulfillment and happiness for her life, after so many problems. A widower, his first wife had died of cancer a few years earlier. He presented himself as someone balanced, sensible, and moderate. It was a supposedly reasonable alternative for someone like Christiane, who was always looking for a safe haven. But we know that people are not always what they seem to be. Sometimes personalities are deceiving, and what once seemed to be a good option turns out to be the opposite of what was thought. Christine's sister also stated that she saw Fabrizio as a perfect husband. According to Kezia, Fabrizio went to great lengths to alienate his wife so that she would believe his words. He would have used his attributes as a psychologist to achieve such a feat, creating a perfect trap for Christiane, who fell without resisting when she came across so many qualities in someone who offered stability and confidence. After the wedding, Christiane gradually moved away from her sister, which would also have been another manipulation by Fabricio. The sister also reports that Christine moved away not only from her, but from other close people, living increasingly isolated with her new husband and daughters. It was clear to these people how such an attitude was a requirement of him, since before Kizia and Christiane were quite close, the two sisters being unique and with a great contact between them. After a few years of marriage, Fabricio and Christiane began to have several relationship problems. These problems were responsible for ending the good coexistence between the two that was no longer the same. Little is known about what was going on internally, but it is thought that fights and arguments became increasingly frequent, including possible exaggerations and violence of the part of Fabricio. At some point in this process of weakening of the relationship, a parallel relationship began between Fabricio and his teenage stepdaughter, Christiane's eldest daughter. The case took place inside the house itself, but it is not known for sure at what moment Christiane became aware of it. And this is where some contradictions reside. According to one version of the story, the teenager was being abused by Fabricio since she was 12 years old. Such violence with the girl would have created in her a kind of Stockholm Syndrome, a condition in which the victim develops a positive affection for the criminal which would explain her behavior later on. However, there is also another version. According to some reports, including Fabricio himself, their relationship began when the young woman was already 15 years old and it was completely consensual. It is worth noting that, in Brazil, a relationship involving an adult and a person over 14 years old of age is no longer considered a crime if it is consensual. Thus. Fabricio and his stepdaughter would have developed a genuine romance, and she would have participated in the crime of her own free will, and not because of mental problems. According to the statements by her aunt Kezia, Christine's sister, the young woman was a sweet and kind girl, being very close to the rest of the family, but that would have changed over the years after her mother's marriage. Kezia says that after Fabricio, she became a distant and cold girl, and that he was responsible for that. What is certain is that Regardless of the real version, the young woman was having a disagreement with her mother, and she didn't like her young sister very much. And these feelings were decisive in the participation in the case. Fabricio was well aware of this friction between mother and daughter, and adding that plus the fact that the young woman had affection for him, he felt it was safe to have her as an accomplice. At the end of November 2020, there was an anonymous complaint of false imprisonment against Fabricio. Those who denounced believed that Fabricio could have been keeping the family in prison, 
is the mother and the youngest daughter had not been outside the house for days. The police then went to the scene to investigate the complaint. Upon arriving at the house, the police were greeted by Fabrizio and his older stepdaughter and the two had to testify to the police. The two claimed that Christine had abandoned for another man, having left home to live with her new lover along with her youngest daughter, leaving her husband and eldest daughter behind. The police, however, found the testimony of the two very strange and decided to open an investigation into the case. From then on, Christine and Caroline were reported missing, as they hadn't been seen for several days. Months of investigations passed without any conclusion being reached, until, at a certain point, Fabrizio came to be seen as a suspect, since his story that Christine abandoned him for another man was not confirmed. In addition, the police also found that Fabrizio was moving Christine's bank accounts, withdrawing all amounts from these accounts. Christiane had recently been fired from her job and was receiving the amount related to her termination. On February 2, 2021, the police decided to make another visit to the family's home. When they arrived at the place, only Fabricio's stepdaughter was in the house, since he hadn't appeared for days. The police officer suspected a renovation in the external area of the residence, where there was a floor recently laid. They then decided to break the concrete with the aid of a bank hoe, and soon confirmed the suspicion. The bodies of Christiane and her daughter Caroline were buried at the renovation site. From this discovery, it became clear that mother and daughter were victims of a brutal crime and that Fabrizio was behind it all. According to the autopsy report, Christine was killed with two blows in the back caused by a sharp object which punctured her lung and caused a hemorrhage. Caroline, on the other hand, was hit with a blow to the head and that resulted in head trauma. Christine's eldest daughter and Fabrizio's lover denied any direct involvement in the crimes. But it was she who pointed out precisely the place where her mother and younger sister were buried. In addition, she remained living with Fabrizio for months even after the crimes. The girl was arrested and taken away by the police. According to the police, she was visibly in love with her stepfather and did her best to please him. Now, it remained to be seen the level of the young woman's involvement in the crime and whether she was mentally capable of determining her role in the actions. According to investigations, Christine would have been killed in November 9th, while Caroline's death occurred about 20 to 25 days after her mother's death. After collecting all this information, it was more than certain for the police that Fabrizio was responsible for the crimes and then he was reported as a fugitive. A few days before the police returned to the family home again, Fabrizio knew that the siege was closing in on him, so he decided to leave the house and look for a place to hide. His first destination was a small town called Bataguasu with just over 23,000 inhabitants. According to the police, Fabrizio had some family members in that city, which made him feel safe fleeing there. However, these family members were not identified. Fabrizio stayed in the city for five days, from January 30 to February 4, 2021. He slept in his own car, always parking in different and isolated places in the city, hoping to go unnoticed by the people around him. In town, he sought help from a religious charity, which provided him food at no cost. He also tried to hospitalize himself as a drug addict, with the intention of having a place to hide and sleep, but when they asked for his documents to make the hospitalization, he deflected and then changed his mind. Security camera footage showed Fabrizio walking through the city center and carrying out financial transactions, which were later discovered to be withdrawals from the pension he received from the government for the death of his first wife. On February 8, 2021, the police were finally successful in their search for Fabricio. He was found in a town called Campo Grande and detained by the police. Fabricio was working as a bricklayer at the time he was arrested. According to an elderly man who helped him without knowing who he was, Fabricio broke into a house on a plot of land with some plantation next to a road. As these plantations were maintained by the elderly, he went there every day to take care of them and in that he came across Fabricio inside the house. Fabrizio apologized identifying himself as João and saying that he was homeless and that his foot was injured. He also said that he had been abandoned by his wife and family and that he only invaded the house because it was raining a lot and he wanted a place to sleep. The elderly man was touched by the story and said he could stay there until he could find a place to live. The old man even got Fabrizio a job as a bricklayer, the job he was working on. On the 8th of February, a Monday, Fabrizio went to his work together with the elderly man. There. The person responsible for the work asked his documents, and Fabrizio said he didn't have them, just said his name was João. 
so he was told that if he wanted to be helped, he would need to pass on more information. Fabrizio then said he had to let it go, that he just wanted peace. At the construction site, he only helped to carry bricks as he did not know how to do any other type of construction-related service. One thing that the other workers found strange was that Fabrizio did not answer when he was called, since he gave the name João and was not used to being called that. This aroused suspicion and they thought he might be hiding something. But before they could do anything, police arrived at the construction site and arrested Fabrizio. He didn't resist arrest and when asked if he was responsible for the death, he just said yes. It was an anonymous tip that led the authorities to Fabrizio. Security camera images showing Fabrizio walking around the city center of Batagosu were shared by thousands of people on social media and this helped him to be recognized and denounced. Fabrizio was immediately sent to prison. He told the police that he acted in self-defense. According to him, Christine had been showing strange behavior since she was fired and threatened him with a knife. He then, to defend himself, took a knife and stabbed her. However, as I have already mentioned here, the autopsy report found that Christine was killed in the back which challenges this version of Fabrizio's self-defense. About Caroline, his nine-year-old stepdaughter, initially Fabrizio said he didn't kill her, blaming his lover and an older stepdaughter. However, he later backtracked and took the blame for the girl's death, claiming the reason was because the child kept asking for her mother. He then fearing that she would make him discovered by the police, decided to get rid of her. In addition to claiming self-defense, Fabrizio said he regretted the crimes he committed. He has made few statements to the press since his arrest. The investigation has not been yet concluded and there are still some disagreements about the case. In addition to the question of whether or not Fabrizio abused his stepdaughter, it is also not known, for example, whether she had an active or passive participation in the crime. According to some versions, the young woman would have been responsible for digging the graves for the bodies, either willingly or at the behest of her lover. There is also a version that it was the 16-year-old who came up with the idea of getting rid of her younger sister. According to this version, after days of asking about her mother, the young woman would have convinced Fabrizio that getting rid of Caroline was the safest thing to do. It is almost certain that every day after finishing Christiane, Caroline suffered a lot of violence from her stepfather and older sister before being killed. A more precise investigation would still be needed to determine how much of the young woman's guilt was in the case, and if she was abused by her stepfather, how much this may have affected her mind and her decision making. So far, she is suspected of participating in the crime and remains in prison. Fabrizio, on the other hand, will be tried for double homicide and concealment of a corpse. Furthermore, he is investigated for abuse, as it is not yet known if his relationship with his stepdaughter started when she was still a child. His presentive detention was ordered and he was taken to the detention center near São Paulo, where he awaits his trial. As soon as new information about the trial comes out, I'll bring the information here for you. Christiane Perdoso dos Santos 34 years old, and Caroline Vitoria dos Santos Guimarães were buried in Pompeia Cemetery under strong commotion from the family and the local population. Well, folks, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this far. Best wishes, and I see you next time.